Let me guess, you clicked on the video because you struggle to paint along with Bob Ross and Bill Alexander. Well, don't worry. In this video right here, I'm gonna give you my personal quick, simple tips that makes any paint along with any of those two artists real easy to do. These are game changers and they will literally help you be a better painter. And bonus points for enunciation. Here we go. Hey, real quick, gotta do a little self-promotion. My name's Wild and I'm here to help you on your creative adventure on this channel. We do tips, tricks, tutorials, and I try to give you general inspiration to help you build confidence so that way that creative journey isn't so daunting. If that sounds like something that you like, you can do me a favor and go down below, leave us a comment, and while you're down there, you can hit like and subscribe. But let's move into the rapid fire section of all these awesome tips. The very first thing you wanna do after, of course, you've selected your paint along tutorial with Bob Ross or Bill Alexander is go to the very end of the video and screen grab the final result. This way you know exactly what you're painting and what it will look like because when they describe what they're doing in the painting, it's a little hard to have that visual foresight. But when you have this reference photo, it makes it so much easier. And trust me, it'll be a game changer. So make sure to screen grab the end painting result. A really big common mistake for new painters and probably you out there is they'll generally make their sky way too big along with their mountains, leaving itty bitty space for the mid ground and foreground. To alleviate this problem, I recommend let's put in a simple horizon line. Use that reference photo, see where it falls within the canvas, then take a ruler and lightly put a line across the door creating your horizon line. The two colors I would recommend for this is using a very diluted phalo blue or a very diluted Van Dyke brown, but trust me, this will help you have a more balanced end painting. I think we can all agree, one of the hardest things about wet on wet painting is getting your colors and layers to stick without becoming a mud mixer. To fix this, invest in some mediums. Use liquid whites, liquid clears, get yourself some gels like Gamblin Solvent Free Gel or Liquin. These aren't cheats, they are hacks that'll help you be a better painter. Professional painters use them all the time, hence you should get yourself acquainted for them. It allows your paint to come easily off your brush to form things like clouds or just generally get your layers to stick. And if you struggle with highlights, oh my gosh, Using mediums will make them stick and be beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's so easy. Just use some mediums. In fact, I got a video on a couple of them up here. Check them out, because trust me, game changer. Like, game changer. Since we're talking about highlights and mediums, you generally have to mix your paints to get the right consistency. However, one tip that I really love, if you're really into adding different variances or multitude of colors, hey, big word for me, I really recommend leaving your paint mixtures extra marbly. The reason this works so well, and you see Bill Alexander do this all the time, is he leaves these extra marble mixtures. Because when you tap your brush in there and you put it on your canvas, you get all these different ranges of colors and just the gradients are just beautiful and it adds so much more depth to your painting. And you know what? Anybody can do this. Just mix them extra marbly, which basically means mix them less. So that way when you take your brush in and you push it against your canvas, you're gonna get all these different ranges of effects. One of the easiest things to do, so give it a shot because it could add a lot of depth to your painting. See, beautiful. Oh, gee, that makes you living. All of a sudden you feel your heart is jumping. Your heart is jumping. Okay, a tip I hear no one ever talk about and is a very common mistake for brand new painters out there. You need to start pushing your colors into your canvas. Let's take this painting right here. Yeah, I had it at the ready. You can't hurt this painting or this material at all. Look, just gonna drop it. Whoa, sorry, landed right on the cat. Sorry, Mr. Bigglesworth, he'll be fine because he's imaginary. But when you can start pushing your colors into your canvas, you're really gonna help create beautiful gradients that go all the way across your canvas and naturally have a fade to them. The second effect this is gonna help you out, especially if you're a brand new painter, is you're pushing that extra color into the canvas, which means it's not gonna sit on top, creating an extra shell of paint that you have to stick on top of. This is going to lead to mud mixing. Eliminate the color you don't need by pushing in the color into that canvas extra, extra hard, okay? I know you feel like you're gonna go through your canvas, but trust me, you won't. And when you apply that extra pressure, you're gonna get smooth gradients across your canvas. That's right, alliteration's on point today. Oh, by the way, if you like this painting right here, hey, my buddy Tally did a full tutorial. If you wanna start painting in acrylics, we're gonna put it right up there. That was a good delivery. I'm getting better at this. I've had a lot of coffee, can you tell? <laughs> a tip I really want you to do sooner than later 
is consider building yourself a small little art studio. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I mean, just look at my spot. It's the corner of a room. Build a little safe space for you to be creative in. And the reason this is important is it's gonna allow you to focus and unwind. Depressure from all the bull crap that's going on in your life and not allow distractions in. So that way, when you start painting, you can actually finish and enjoy the process because everything is outside of the space. This space right here is all about you and expressing your creativity or at the very least, just having a moment to yourself, you know? Get rid of all the distractions. There's nothing worse than when there's a bunch of distractions going on while you're trying to paint. Find yourself an awesome little corner, build a simple little art studio, and if you enjoy the process, hey, you can always upgrade down the line, but find yourself a creative space. One tip that I say over and over again, yeah, I'm a broken record, but I have to beat it into your mind, is if you're gonna do a Bob Ross or Bill Alexander paint along tutorial, you don't have to do it in 30 minutes or an hour. Take your time, enjoy the creative journey. It's okay to make mistakes. It can take a few hours or a few days or hell, even a few weeks. Slow down. Enjoy it. Pop a bottle of wine, get yourself a whiskey, Blast the tunes in between when you pause the tutorial and enjoy the process. You don't have to keep up with the masters. We're trying to build confidence, but more importantly, I want you to have fun because I want you to be in this for the long haul because I'm shallow and I want you to support my channel for the long haul. That's right, I'm bringing it right back to me, but hey, I'm giving you great tips and content, so let's move on to the next one. Oh God, people are probably tired of me. <laughs> you wanna know one of the best painting practice tips anybody could give you that no one talks about? The minute you finish one of your paint alongs with Bob Ross or Bill Alexander, look at it and see what you can improve upon. And then rather finding a new tutorial for the next time, I want you to paint that same exact tutorial because we wanna build on that confidence. We wanna build on those skills. We wanna build on the things that yes, you sucked at because that's the only way we're gonna actually build your skills and talent. I actually recommend painting the same thing three times, but if you don't wanna do that, I understand it can be boring, but paint it at least twice. This way you have something that is more or less a before and after. So that way you can see and measure improvement and see where you're still struggling so you know what to focus on practicing in your spare time. Look, if you wanna become a master like Bob Ross and Bill Alexander, there's only one true answer. Well, actually two. You gotta practice, practice, practice. And number two is, hell, you gotta watch more of my videos. In fact, I went ahead and made you a playlist of videos for beginners out there that's gonna make you better and have everything just click for you. Gonna put it over here to the right hand side. And hey, while you're checking out that video set over there, you can do me a favor and leave some comments, like, subscribe, and hey, if you like what you see, you can always become a YouTube channel member. I'm gonna get back to my 15th cup of coffee because I got a lot of energy and heck, Bumble's calling my name. Maybe I'll find a creative girl one of these days, but if not, I'll be here for you. Peace.